What is going on guys, this is Visual Intelligence and welcome to another exciting Cinema 4D tutorial. Today uh, I will be showing you guys how to make really uh, cool uh, intro animation for your logo or text or whatever. Um, we're basically gonna have to um, gonna um, try to recreate this kind of effect. Uh, I kind of posted this intro like uh, two weeks ago or so and uh, a lot of you guys wanted to know how to make these animations uh, and uh, what I'll be showing you today is just the, the first part is like when, when the uh, logo appears from uh, from the front of the camera so uh, also I did this effect in, in this intro uh, I mean, uh, the other parts moving are really easy. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to um, uh, watch the tutorial about that. Just, just keyframe uh, stuff. Um, and uh, you'll be learning a lot of uh, new stuff in this tutorial, hopefully. And um, uh, let's get into it. So let's actually open up Cinema 4D, and I already have it open. Um, and. Uh, if you can see here, uh, this is the uh, animation that we're going for. Just adding uh, some really nice um, uh, audio, and it will be it will look great after like a cool render and uh, really cool lighting. So uh, that said, let's uh, go on and open up a new file, create a new file. We're going to find you. The very first thing you want to do is to go to your uh, render settings and choose 1280 by 720p uh, just to uh, kind of get the uh, 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio because that, that's that's the uh, uh, aspect ratio that you need but uh, if you're gonna uh, go ahead and render it um, just go with full HD uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, really depends on your computer and how uh, how fast it is. So, um, by the way, I don't. Uh, I'm not having the grid shown. So if you don't you don't want to have it as well, just go to um, filter and then uncheck the grid. I'm gonna check it again just to see uh, where my origin is. So that looks great. Um, the first thing to do is obviously you're gonna have to add your own logo so let's go to file and open or maybe a uh, file merge so it won't create any other uh, project for us I'm just gonna grab my uh, uh, the same logo that I used in the example I just showed you Uh, so that's what you're gonna get more or less so what you want to do is you want to uh, go ahead and center it and uh, a really cool way to do it is just to zero out the X and Y and then hit apply and this will do it for you um, so uh, we have three pieces of the logo three splines we want them uh, all to be uh, separate so we can um, move them individually so select one of them go to your um, extrude by holding on just click it and this will make it make the path selected as a child of the extrude that you just created <coughs> let's do these same steps for both and uh, yeah that looks great so what you want to do is you want to make your logo look a lot better and uh, a really cool way to do it is to add some um, caps so select everything then go to your caps panel and then select it to fill it cap we don't want much so uh, maybe one centimeters and two subdivisions or steps and that looks great <coughs> give that a render <coughs> you can constrict your uh, logo to make it um, not looking very um, thick you can see the difference here 
we'll keep the uh, exact um, uh, sizes for the you know, for the thickness. So that's a good way. So uh, next thing to do is go to your Mogra app and then by holding Alt, uh, click on Fracture. Uh, actually, it didn't work. <coughs> you really don't want don't have to click Alt. So select every extrude and then drag it under the uh, fracture object as a child and this will make it as one uh, logo but with different or separate um, pieces. Next thing is you want to go to your MoGraph and then effector and then choose random effector. And uh, what you want to do with the random effector, you want to just randomize the rotation. So let's uncheck the position, check the rotation, and then just play with it as you um, as you want. It really, uh, really doesn't matter. Maybe check the position to make them separate a bit. Be not the Y. I'll just set the X position to like 200 centimeters. If you don't want, if you don't like the way they are aligning, just go ahead and uh, change the seed. Whatever you feel comfortable with. So back to our fracture object. And uh, what you want to do, by the way, is to uh, keyframe the uh, the strength of the effector. So let's uh, select the effector. Let's keyframe it at 100% uh, strength by uh, having the first keyframe in our timeline and then holding control let's just click on the strength and this will create a keyframe for us. Let's go to keyframe 30 or uh, by the way 30 means uh, one second because we're gonna uh, on the um, 30 frames per second frame rate. So let's go to the first second and then make it uh, zero and then by holding control let's just click on the uh, keyframe uh, circle and this create this cool animation for us. So that's a cool thing. Now we want to do what we want to do now is we want to um, create a new camera. Let's zero out everything by um, clicking on this reset PSR button and this will um, make everything here set to zero which is a cool thing or you can do it manually I mean it's really not that uh, much of work let's click on the uh, black box to uh, jump to uh, our camera let's go to keyframe one and as you can see our pieces are not hiding our um, our uh, camera so change the uh, the material of the uh, fracture and see if we have some problem in the first frame and as you can see everything is clear which is really nice so that's a cool thing if you have some problem just play with the seat uh, a little more and uh, maybe you can get uh, a better results so the next step is to um, keyframe the camera so what you want to do is um, having the camera object selected and the first frame uh, on our timeline let's create a new um, uh, keyframe by holding this uh, by clicking this keyframe button and then in the 20th frame maybe 15 like uh, half a second you want to go back a little bit like already maybe in 200 try that minus 200 by the way want to go backwards so uh, click on the record keyframe button and then let's just um, see what our animation is looking like right now. 
so let's play it and this looks uh, a lot better let's actually um, you can increase that to maybe 400 centimeters yeah that looks great I mean uh, on this keyframe sorry so 400 and apply let's create a new keyframe again just in case and this looks a lot better so that's our animation maybe you want it to be a little in the front this looks great if you want to get rid of the um, this uh, this if you want to get rid of the spacing I mean this spacing you can go to your uh, random object and then uncheck the position just to see and uh, this will block our view so we don't want that maybe we can check the position and then it would be Y zero of DC and uh, maybe this looks really nice yeah that looks great so we want to add more animation to our um, intro so what you want to do is you're gonna go create a new null object let's uncheck the black box for now uh, drag the camera under the null object and then what we want to do is we want to keyframe the null object so let's go to keyframe number one add a keyframe position or whatever it's a null object on nav scale or rotation or whatever so go to your last frame and then set it back a little bit maybe 80 centimeters really not uh, very um, intense stuff let's play back our animation and this will uh, add the zoom in out effect to our animation so I think that's about it guys I'm not gonna show you how to texture it or add a um, lights to it because you can easily um, go to um, Grayscale Gorilla uh, and add some light kits or maybe there is this um, light kit finite free from uh, motion squared it's totally free I'm gonna be linking you to that in the description so what you can do is you uh, go ahead and add some studio let's go back to our animation let's just select everything control C to copy and then go back to your studio let's remove the uh, extrude notes and then add our animation just check the uh, black square on your camera maybe add some um, material to your fracture object and uh, that's it guys you can now have a really cool uh, logo animation if you want to export it as a PNG make sure to uh, go to your uh, save options and then check the alpha channel and then uh, make it a PNG sequence or a quick time PNG so what I want what I uh, like to do is to go to PNG and then choose a nice folder new folder that you just created just uh, in order not to um, have the uh, frames all over your desktop or all over the place you don't want that so make sure to create a new um, folder just for your uh, animation uh, also maybe you want to um, add some ambient occlusion Let's see uh, really ambient occlusion really doesn't add that much so we can kind of get rid of it also uh, make sure to have 1280 by 720 or um, 1920 by 1080 for HD whatever works for you so um, yeah that's uh, 
that seems to be really interesting you can see our animation here with the lights and the textures and everything uh, by the way it's only three seconds if you want to make it even more like even take much longer you can uh, uh, let's say we want five seconds so we want 150 frames and drag this out and uh, maybe we want to go to our node want to drag this keyframe out a little bit uh, let's make it more than 180 maybe um 150 and then apply in the keyframe let's see so that looks really nice uh, you can play around with all these settings as you want I uh, already kind of showed you the basics of everything so um, yeah uh, I guess that's it for this tutorial uh, thank you guys for watching leave your feedback and comments uh, make sure to have, leave a like and subscribe uh, also check my other videos really uh, would like that if you like this one and uh, peace